Hello everyone, it's Patricia here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to bring to you a different kind of video. Now, anybody who melts wax, typically you're going to use an electric wax warmer. And I am an independent Scentsy consultant, so I have a lot of Scentsy warmers. But I might be a little bit of a different kind of con consultant because I also melt vendor wax, I burn candles, I do it all. Um, typically I warm probably like three quarters Scentsy and a little bit of other things. Now. What I decided to do is I've noticed uh, because I do Tester Tuesday, which is a series of videos that we analyze scents and the viewers vote on the scents. But because I do that, I've kind of noticed a few things. Um, let's say, for instance, in my open concept area, I have three large warmers and one warmer seemed to get hotter in the scent in the sense that the wax um, released its fragrance oils a little faster than the other two warmers. So I thought I get I wish there was a way that I could, you know, test things. And then one day my husband just pulls this out <laughs> and I said, what is that? And he said, it's an infrared thermometer and what it, he works for a milk company. And what they have to do is they have to um, check the temperature of the, of the milk products as they're being delivered to make sure they, um, you know, are under a certain temperature in terms of safety for the milk, that kind of thing. So I thought, oh, this is the answer to my prayers. So what I decided to do was I said, well, let's do a video where I go and kind of check every warmer in my house. Now I just wanna say, I did turn the warmers on about an hour ago. I also wanna say that all these warmers that are on, I do not always have all of these warmers on at once. There are a lot of warmers. I pretty much turned on everything. You know, you're probably gonna see dust in the videos, that kind of thing. I just thought I'd leave that there to make everyone feel comfortable that their house might be dusty, right? Okay, the other thing is I have to go from room to room and take my iPad, which I use for my iPad mini, which I use for my cam camera. And I will try to um, mount it on like a makeshift tripod that I have. But I apologize if things are shaky and things like that because this is something I've never done before, but I, I really wanted to get this video out. Now, I was heavy into science and university. That was my major. So basically, when you're doing a science experiment, you're supposed to keep things as constant as possible. So I'm just gonna let you know that I'm not keeping all the variables as constant as possible. So if you were gonna do this and really have an accurate test, you would probably have all your warmers in one room, you would turn them on at the exact same time because one room would be a similar temperature, you would turn them all on, you would probably put the same wax in every warmer and the same um, amount of wax, okay? I'm not doing that. Some of my warmers don't have any wax in them right now. Most of them do. Um, yeah, we're just going to kind of wing it just so everyone can get an idea. Now, some of these warmers um, you may have in your home, so it'll just kind of help you. So let's break off and we'll start getting into the, the nitty gritty and we'll see what each warmer, how hot each warmer gets. And I'm also uh, including a tea light warmer warmed by a tea light. So let's get into it right now. Okay, here we are in the first room, and there is going to be a lot of echoing because my house is very open concept. But this is the Silver Vine Mini Warmer that is located in my mudroom laundry room area. What I'm going to do in general is just try to keep roughly six, six inches away uh, when I take the measurement. Okay, so I basically hold it down. I'm going to hold it from about six inches away, right in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, and then let go and show you the number, 141.6. So I will do that with each warmer and let's go to the next area. Okay, so here we are in my open concept area. The warmer that is bright is the Elegance Warmer from Scentsy and the dark gray warmer is a Mainstays 24 watt hot plate. So the Elegance Warmer is measuring 152.6 and The Mainstays warmer is measuring 237.7 Fahrenheit. Let's go on to the next area. Okay, so this is the second warmer that I use out of three. Typically when I warm Scentsy in my open concept area, this is a 13 watt element warmer and it is called Stardance. And I will take the temperature. And it is recording 147.4. Okay, so here is the final warmer that I use in my open concept space. It's a 25 watt bulb warmer. It's, I believe it's called the Vintage Croc. I have it on a warmer stand there. 
I'm just going to pull it out because it's a little bit underneath some cabinets and you'll be able to see the cord but I will try to hide that again and I will take the temperature and it is measuring 169.5 okay so here we are in another area of my home I'm just gonna put the lid on and I will show you this is the Vino warmer which is a 25 or no excuse me 40 watt Edison bulb warmer I love this warmer it's very pretty I often don't put wax in it but if I do, sometimes I put vendor wax, and sometimes I put Sensi wax, but usually, sometimes I just use it for looks. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take the temperature, and I will let you know what it, what it says. Sorry, I can't see the light. Just one second. Here we go. And it is measuring 164.3. Okay, so here we are in my area of my kitchen dining room area, and this is the vendor wax warmer that I like to use. So when I warm vendor wax in my open concept area, I usually use the Mainstays 24 watt hot plate. I use this one and I use a tea light warmer, which you will see shortly. But I'll just take the temperature. And I love this warmer. It's 24 watt hot plate, but it's very wide open dish. So it's, it's probably one of my favorites. Um, I got it at Michael's and I think if you use a 40% off or 50% off coupon, you can get it really cheap. So I will take the temperature. And it is measuring 216.5. Okay, here we are. This is my fireplace mantle, and I have a tea light warmer going and with some vendor wax in the top. Um, this one is really awkward for me to film, so I'm just going to do my best, and hopefully I don't fall. But anyway, I'm just going to take the temperature. Okay, and it is measuring uh, 188.6. So that pretty much takes up all the warmers in my open concept space. Let's move on. Okay, here we are in my middle child's room. Now he's in a wheelchair. He has the biggest room in the house. And um, we just have his warmer set up as a nightlight. And sometimes I put that uh, ugly, uh, I don't know what it is, underneath because sometimes the wax gets spilled a little bit in this area. So I will take the temperature. and its temperature is reading 175.5. Now we're gonna go to his adjoining bathroom. Okay, here I am in my son's adjoining bathroom. Now I used to have two mini warmers, um, one on another side just like this, but my husband kept knocking the wax out when he washed his face. So he actually gets ready in this washroom because he leaves in the middle of the night and uh, he doesn't wake up as, um, as many family members this way. So uh, anyway, so we just use one mini warmer and I think this is called the milk glass mini warmer. It's no longer available. The one in my son's room is called the Aspen Grove and it is no longer available as well. But so anyway, I will take this temperature. And it is measuring 153.9. Let's move on. Okay, so at nighttime, I usually turn on three warmers in my home. They are divvied up mainly in around areas that need to be lit up so we can see. This is one of the areas that just gives off a lot of light. This is called the Lucent Warmer. It's a very beautiful warmer and I will, it's a 25 watt bulb warmer and I will measure it the temperature. And it is measuring uh, sorry about that, 162.1. So let's move on to the second nighttime warmer I leave on. Okay, so this warmer is located as you go up the stairs from my main level into my upstairs level. It is a Chasing Fireflies mini warmer. I really, really like this warmer and I'll measure the temperature. And it is measuring 154.6. Okay, here is one of my absolutely favorite warmers. It is the Vintage Gray Warmer. It gives off a lot of light, great for nighttime use. It is located at the top of my stairs, it gives off a lot of light, you can really see. So I'm gonna take its temperature. And it is measuring 175.8. Okay, so here we are in my lovely daughter's room. Lots of purple going on in here. 
It's a 25 watt beacon warmer and I will take the temperature. Right now she's got wild black cherry, one of her favorites going on. And it is measuring 177.3. Now off to my youngest son's room. Okay, so here we are in my youngest son's room. He has the smallest room in the house. This is a cranberry glass mini warmer. And I do not have a lot of glass mini warmers. I find they don't seem to melt the wax. So let's see how hot this gets so we can compare. I will take the temperature. Just one second. Sorry guys. It's hard, sometimes it's hard to find the dot. Okay, what do we have? 150.4. Okay, we're almost done. Here we are in the bonus room. This is one of my favorite warmers. This was one of the warmers I used to have in my open concept area and I moved it up to my bonus room in an attempt to get this room to throw better. This room is notoriously hard to get wax to throw well in. Right now I'm warming Bonfire Beach in here as part of Tester Tuesday and I must say I'm really liking it. But let me take the temperature. And it is measuring 155.7. Okay, so as I film this video, it is actually Halloween. So what I thought I'd do is put Jack in our window for the evening. I haven't used him yet, so right now he has no wax inside. But I thought, let's turn him on anyway and put him as part of the experiment. This is a 15 watt warmer, guys. So it is measuring, as you can see, a little lower, 129.2. I'm just going to verify that again. One hundred twenty-six point five. Uh, I should mention that the instructions do say that the um, temperature can vary from, I think it's plus or minus a certain amount. So I will move on to the final warmer in my bonus room. Okay, here we have a warmer that I melt my vendor wax in. So I either have my Scentsy warmer going if I'm warming, warming Scentsy wax, which is the bo Boho, I believe it's called. Or I have this one, which is from Yankee Candle, and it is a 20 watt hot plate warmer. I will measure it. There, there is wax in there, you just can't tell because it's clear. And it is measuring 173.8. We have one other room in the house and then we will be done. Okay, so here we are in my room and my husband's room. Now, We'll start with this warmer because this is my vendor wax warmer and here is the Scentsy Go for someone who has never seen the Scentsy Go, that's what it looks like. Now this is a Glade 15 watt hot plate warmer and there's a little bit of wax in there so let's just take the temperature. And it is measuring 163.4. So there are three other warmers in this room, keep in mind I do not use them all at the same time. <laughs> Um, I will pause the video and we will do one at a time. Okay, so here we are in my adjoining bathroom that is right off my bedroom. I have a Scentsy warmer called Tea Rose. I really, really love this warmer. Um, the only problem is it is a little bit broken, so it does tilt if you can see. So you kind of have to see how it tilts. You don't want to fill it up too much or it'll overflow, but I will take the temperature. And I tried to take it for about five seconds. It's measuring 139.3. Let's move on to the two full-size warmers I have in my room. Okay, so here we have an element warmer. It's a 12 watt element warmer called the Doodle Dot. Behind that is my diffuser. But this warmer, I am slowly getting away from using. It used to be the warmer I would use all the time. And some waxes I find do not perform the greatest in there. Now I do love it because it's got a nice big dish, nice wide flat area. But I'm just going to take the temperature. It has no wax in it right now. Oops, sorry, I'm off camera there. What is it? 144.1. Now I'm just going to swing on over up here. This is behind where I normally film. I don't know how I'm going to get up here, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so this is the warmer I, I've been using instead to melt. So if I warm wax in my bedroom, and if it's Scentsy Wax, I use this warmer and I use in my bathroom the Tea Rose. If I warm vendor wax, I have these warmers turned off and just the Glade warmer going. 
So what I might do is just pause the video, take the temperature and show you because I have to put everything down because this is up kind of high. Just one moment. Okay, so that warmer is measuring 166.3. What I will do is gather all the information and be right back. Okay, so we've gathered a lot of information and temperatures and what can we take from this? So I'm just gonna summarize. We looked at 15 watt Sensi bulb warmers, which included one full size warmer. We looked at um, element warmers from Sensi, which are basically hot plate warmers. They just call them element warmers, 12 and 13 watt. We looked at various 25 watt bulb warmers from Sensi and one 40 watt Edison bulb from Sensi. Now, what I use for vendor wax, I'm just gonna call them vendor wax warmers. They're not you know, branded as such, but um, I looked at the 15 watt Glade hot plate. I looked at the 20 watt Yankee hot plate. I looked at the 24 watt Ashland from Michaels and I looked at the 24 watt hot plate from Mainstays, which I purchased at Walmart. And also we've put in the tea light warmer, which I also use, which is worn by a tea light candle. So I just want to remind you for Scentsy Wax, I always warm it in my Scentsy warmers. For retail wax like Walmart, Glade, um, Ashland, I actually also warm it in my Scentsy warmers, and I don't advise you to do that unless you are willing to void your Scentsy warranty because if you warm non-Scentsy wax in your Scentsy warmers, it actually voids your warranty. Please keep that in mind. My vendor wax warmers, I always warm vendor wax, obviously, and I warm Yankee tarts there. So what we're going to do is we are going to just summarize and kind of go through what was the least hot to the most hot. And I basically want to say there are a lot of overlap of things, but we're just, I'm going to try to group them. Um, so even within certain categories, there's a lot of wide range of temperature, and I'll talk about that in a second. But on the low end of the spectrum, we had the 15 watt Scentsy bulb warmers, and the lowest of them all was Jack. And I think the reason that was the lowest, because there's a lot of distance between that bulb and the top of the dish. After the 15 watt bulb warmers, we had most of the Scentsy element warmers that I have, the 12 and 13 watt. Then sneaking in after that, we had the big range of 25 watt bulb Scentsy warmers. Now, you're probably thinking, well, shouldn't they all be the same if they're 25 watt? As well, shouldn't the mini warmers all be the same? So basically, I think what's happening is design is playing in, into how hot the warmers are getting. You could have things like the material. So usually ceramic gets hotter than glass. You could have the color. Obviously, dark gets hotter than light. You could have the distance between the bulb and the dish, if the dish is sitting right on top of that bulb, you can bet your, you know what, that it's gonna get hot as you know what. So um, the vent holes, how many vent holes are there? How wide is the dish? All those things can factor in. So in general, um, we did have some pretty hot uh, 25 watt Scentsy bulb warmers. So what we're gonna do is now we're starting to get in, oh, in the 40 watt Scentsy bulb warmer, that was actually mixed in with those uh, 25 watt numbers. So. Maybe what I think is going on with that Vino warmer is the Vino warmer is the Edison bulb, if you remember, and it's got a clear glass sleeve that's quite high. So clear and glass, maybe some of the heat is being dissipated. But now we're starting to get in the vendor wax warmers. So that 15 watt Glade hot plate, that was kind of in amongst all the 25 watt bulb warmers. So that's something to note. And then the Yankee 20 watt hot plate was actually kind of on the higher end of that 25 watt uh, Sensi bulb a range so just something interesting now outside of that we had the tea light warmer warmed by the flame we had the then we had the ashland 24 watt hot plate from michaels and then at the let's not burn ourselves hopefully category we had the 24 watt mainstays from walmart now i just want to say that particular warmer i can only pick it up i should have known it was the hottest and i actually went back double checked yes that number was accurate Two, it measured 238 on average. So that is very, very hot, dangerously hot. Usually I do something called hot dumping wax. So basically the wax is liquid and I wanna change it. I just pick up the dish, dump it, the wax in the garbage, wipe out the dish and I'm good to go. I cannot do that with the mainstays warmer. It gets dangerously hot. I cannot even hold it long enough to, to do that. I would drop the dish for sure. So it's just something to consider. So basically for me, what I got out of this is I did get some take home messages from my past experiences. So in the past, I noticed if I put Sensational's wax, which is a harder style wax, if I put that in the Scentsy warmer, 
Um, it would do fine in bulb warmers, but some of my element warmers, it would not fully melt around the edge. And now I know officially that yes, the element warmers are not getting as hot. The other thing is I was noticing certain warmers, the scent was being um, lost faster than others. And they might have been all say 25 watt bulbs. And now I know that some of them are getting hotter. So to counteract that, the hotter warmer, you would just have to bump up the wax just a smidge and have them run out all at the same time roughly. Um, and the other thing is for scentsy people, um, you know, mini warmers typically don't get as hot as the, the full size warmers. So basically a little bit less wax in the mini and a little bit more in the bulb and hopefully they'll run it at the same time. But why does temperature even matter? Generally, the hotter the temperature, the higher strength and throw from your wax. The other thing is the hotter the temperature, the faster the scent oils will be released because they heat up faster. So if you are having hotter warmers, you are going to possibly use more wax or change your wax more frequently. Now on the flip side, lower temperature warmers, probably lower strength and throw, and also probably longer lasting scent duration. So let's just talk vendor wax briefly. Vendor wax, people always ask, why does vendor wax need hotter warmers? Well, not all of them do, but most of them do. It's usually, they're kind of wax blends, but typically it's a harder style wax. It needs hotter temperature to heat and melt properly to get that good strength and throw. Now on the flip side, you're trading that great strength and throw, you are getting a usually faster scent release and so your wax um, seems to die off faster and so you're changing your wax more often. So that's why in Vendor Wax Empties videos, you see people going through lots of things because it wears off quick so they really do go through lots of wax. Scentsy. Scentsy has a special wax recipe that no one really knows, but it is basically designed to melt at a lower temperature. So in, in factored in there, you don't need warmers that are, are as hot. So some people may argue you get a lower strength and throw from Scentsy Wax compared to Vendor Wax. Personally, I find there's a lot of Scentsy Wax that compares to Vendor Wax and some Vendor Wax performs weakly, you know, is, are weaker performers and some are strong performers. I think basically it depends on the vendor it depends on the scent pyramid, which is a whole other video. I don't want to get it off onto a tangent, but basically Scentsy warmers, you have lower temperature warmers because the wax is designed to melt just above body temperature. And I think the reason Scentsy does that is because they are factoring in the safety feature. They really want to appeal to families with kids and pets because if you have young kids and pets and you have that you know, Ashland warmer or that Mainstays warmer, if they touch that, they are going to get injured. I mean, I can't touch it and I, I know better. So basically, if you have young kids that, or pets, obviously you can't explain to them to stay away from the warmers. You can rest assured with Sensi warmers, there's basically a, a built-in security feature there that they're not gonna get severely injured with the warmers. Yes, they do get hot. You can put your finger in the wax. It, you're not gonna burn yourself. You don't wanna leave it there forever, but but you're not gonna, you know, endanger your life. Um, it's it's a little bit, you can rest assured that your safety is, is factored in. Okay, so I think we've kind of talked about a lot of things. So let's just summarize. Take home message. There's many different types of warmers. They all get to different temperatures. Basically, you have to look at all your warmers and figure out what ones are gonna work best for your type of wax. You also have to, if you're using one type of wax and you may notice it's getting hotter in a certain type of temperatures, it's probably due to design feature. Um, I think the take home goal would be try to pick a warmer that gets hot enough for you that you get a good strength and throw and also an acceptable scent duration. So your, your scent lasts long, long enough for you, but you also want to pick a low enough temperature that you have safety built in. Even if you don't have, young kids or pets, you want to consider your own safety. So please comment below if you have any questions for me. We talked about a lot in this video. If I do not know the answer to your question, I will definitely look into it. And I'd also love to know what your favorite warmer is. I think one of my favorites is definitely the fluted gray and the, I definitely like Vino as well, but I, I think I have a soft spot for all my warmers. One last thing, warmers. Please always read your instructions with your warmers and follow the uh, safety features. A lot of those retail warmers talk about not leaving them on for a certain number of hours. You wanna pay attention to that. 
You don't want to risk a fire or anything like that in your home. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please feel free to like, share, or subscribe. As always, I'd like to, to wish you a great day in your neck of the woods. Take care, and I will see you in the next video.